Hey guys, today we're going to be setting up an S3 bucket in AWS and we're going to configure lifecycle rule policies using Terraform. S3 is Amazon's offering of object level storage and it comes in certain different flavors. I'm going to introduce you to three of those flavors and show you how you can use this in a personal project or in your professional workplace. We're going to start by setting up an S3 standard bucket. We're then going to set up lifecycle rules to transition it to cheaper storage over time. Let me illustrate. If you have five terabytes of storage on S3 standard, it'll cost you roughly $130. However, after seven days or 30 days or whatever your requirements are, if you transition it to infrequent access, your cost for that storage almost halves, bringing it down to $70. And finally, if you were to transition that five terabytes worth of data into Glacier Deep Archive, it would cost you only $10.30. Now there are trade-offs between the different storage types. You can't just chuck everything to infrequent access or deep archive because you do pay more for retrieval costs and it does take a lot longer to retrieve your files. So think of S3 as everyday storage where you need to interact with the files, infrequent access as I might need these files in future but I'm not too sure and deep archive, you just need to hold on to them but chances are you're never gonna really retrieve them. In a professional environment, this is perfect for things like backup where you can't use AWS Backup Manager. Maybe you need the first 30 days to be easily accessible, then the next 90 days you can transition to cheaper storage, and then you can move it to deep archive for compliance reasons. Maybe you have to hold on to your customer data for 10 years before you can delete it. That's the use case. Now we're gonna go ahead and create our bucket. We're gonna start by creating a new file. We'll call it s3.tf for Terraform. Because we're deploying into AWS, we're gonna give it the AWS provider and we're gonna tell it which region we wanna deploy our resources into. Handy tip, if you're mucking around with Terraform and it looks white like mine did, just go ahead and install the Terraform extension. It'll then pick up your syntax correctly. We're gonna go ahead and create our bucket. So we've got an AWS S3 bucket, give it a name, and we're gonna set default access to private so the entire world can't see our bucket contents. Let's do a Terraform init. Cool, now let's do a Terraform format. Let's run Terraform plan to see what is going to happen. Forgot to mention, if you're looking to set up Terraform or wondering how you can interact with AWS using the command line interface, I will link, first link in the description, my tutorial videos on how to set that up. Okay, it looks like this argument is deprecated. By default, it blocks public access now anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead, update the file and do a plan again. That looks fine. So we're gonna go ahead and run Terraform apply. All right, it doesn't like the region I'm currently configured to. Let me just update that, go Terraform apply again. Awesome, it's gone ahead and created our bucket. Now keep in mind, bucket names have to be unique across AWS. So you're gonna have to go ahead and change this to a unique name. We're gonna open up the console, navigate to S3 and have a look at what hard code has created. We can see there's our test bucket. If we head over to permissions, we should see that block public access is on by default, which is what we wanna see. However, when we go over to management, we won't see any lifecycle rules configured. We're gonna go ahead and set some up. Under our S3 bucket resource, we're gonna go ahead and put in a lifecycle rule, give it a name. So we're gonna transition it to infrequent access after 30 days. So transition, 30 days, storage class. We're gonna change this from Glacier to infrequent access. Now I don't actually know what the exact value is. So we're gonna go look that up. The Terraform documentation is pretty good. You just search for what you want. So storage class, it then has a link to the AWS documentation. And we can see these are the different values that we can set. So we're gonna go ahead and go standard infrequent access. We're gonna go ahead and run a Terraform apply on that. All right, we're missing the enabled flag, so we'll go ahead and set that to true. And it looks like we don't need that one. I was copy and pasting from ChatGPT. Looks like it gave me dodgy code. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fix up all of these errors. I will see you guys in a minute. Okay, well, that's a lesson to me to not use ChatGTP for my code. 
A lot of it was outdated and deprecated. Here is the correct code that we need. I'm gonna run you through every line. And to get the correct code, I had to do it the old school way, going through the official technical documentation. I couldn't just ask an AI. We need to set a lifecycle configuration policy and we need to link it to our S3 bucket. The way we do this is the first is a resource type. So this will link to the AWS underscore S3 bucket. Then you give it the name that you gave and then just dot ID. That'll link your policy to the S3 bucket. The next bit is we set up the rules that we want to associate to the lifecycle rule. Again, give it any name you want, make sure it's enabled. We then set up the transitions. I've set it up so after 30 days, it will transition to standard infrequent access. And then after 60 days, it'll go to deep archive. And finally, after 180 days, it will automatically delete. Keep in mind, you can play around with these values and you can also transition to other storage types if you need. We're gonna go back to our console and take a look at our bucket. So if we head over to management again, this time we'll see that there is one lifecycle rule applied. We'll go into it, we can see it's enabled. And over here, we can see the transitions that we've applied. So after 30 days, it'll go to standard infrequent access, up to 60, Glacier, and then after 180 days, it will automatically delete. To recap, we created an S3 bucket. We set up lifecycle configuration policies to transition it to cheaper storage after a certain amount of days. And then finally, we expired the object so that they permanently get removed at the end. The purpose of this is to minimize our costs and to have an efficient system. All of the code from today's lesson will be on GitHub. I'll leave a link down below. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. Also, let me know if there's a particular topic you'd like me to create a video of in future. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.